It's days like this I absolutely hate. Look outside. It's mid-April right now. We're almost going into May and we have an ice storm. So, not much I can do today. I remember last year, at this time of year, I was probably at the racetrack doing a few passes, having a barbecue with my friends, but I guess that's climate change for you. So I guess today we're just gonna look at a few things that I'm gonna work on for the week. Unfortunately, can't do no work on my BMW race car because it's still at the body shop. So we're gonna have to wait on them to finish that up. I got a lot of cool stuff planned for that. So for now, I'll just show you what we what we have in store for the, for the rest of the week, for this week of April 15th, 2018. Just terrible, just terrible. This week we're working on a 2007 Saab 9.3 V6. This is a really special car because it's not your average uh, 9.3 V6. It's got a few little goodies under the hood. It's got a little intake. It's got an operated turbo. It has injectors. I'm not sure exactly which package this one came with, but as we go on for, on for the next video, I'll find out what it has exactly. I know there's a three inch downpipe in there. Get the light. Be able to see it there. It's a three inch downpipe and a three inch exhaust going all the way back. But what I want to discuss today is what are the common issues with these 9.3s with the V6. When you first look at it under the hood, you can see the engine takes up quite a bit of space. So the first thing that comes to my mind is that you have heat soak issues with it because there's not much room here for the air to circulate. So there are a few issues associated with that, especially after you do these sort of turbo upgrades and performance upgrades. The first thing that comes to my mind is this coolant expansion tank here and these two hoses. It's a common issue on these. They get hot, they get brittle, they crack. So I have a couple of solutions for that. We'll discuss later. And also the other common uh, maintenance issues on these are the coil packs. The heat really uh, shortens the life of them. So you have guys changing them typically, maybe at around 50K or so, 60K, it depends. It depends on how hard the car's driven, the, the conditions and stuff. But that's a very common thing on these ones. Well, in terms of the V6, that's the ma major common issues with it. In terms of the car, however, there's a few other issues I'd like to discuss. The other thing with these, this is an aero, and I'm sure a lot of you guys know, this one does not have an aero lip anymore. It sits rather low from factory, even if the car's not lowered, a lot of people mangle them up. You just gotta watch where you're going, but that, that happens a lot on these. And another common thing for these ones are the broken springs. Let's get a light for this. As you can see, the spring up at the top here is broken. Right up about there, you'll see it. I like to get out with the camera in my hand. Right above there. It's a common issue on these ones. And this one also has lowering springs, by the way. Another thing I have, see happen a lot on these ones are the rod and the intercooler and the condenser it gets mangled rather easily if you're not careful, especially if the car's lowered. As you can see here, there's a like chunk missing off of the intercooler, right about there. That could be a possible boost leak. I wonder if the car was complaining about poor drivability, so we will do a boost leak test on it to see if that's in fact leaking, and if so, we will change it. We're probably going to go for an upgraded one. Due to the space constraints, usually what we do, we can take an intercooler from uh, the Mitsubishi Evo, I believe it was the 8 or the 9, it's not a direct fit, but it's in the ballpark and we can make mounts for it and it'll fit fairly well in there. So I don't know if he's going to go with that or we might just go for a direct replacement depending on what he wants. And also the other thing that's going on down here, so this is this 3-inch downpipe over here. This flex pipe, let's get a better shot of it. You can see it's falling apart there, it's pretty rusty. So we're going to replace that flex pipe, we're going to weld a new one on. So it looks like a mild steel downpipe that's been painted. Same with the exhaust, we've already pulled the exhaust out. 
because we have to change a fuel level sensor. We've already fixed that up, it's been completed and the tank has been reinstalled. That's another common issue with these ones, is that your fuel level gauge won't read sometimes, so you gotta change the level sensor inside the tank. This is the exhaust that's installed on the car. It's fairly well made from the back, as you can see. Mild steel again, which is painted. The paint's already peeling off. So it looks like it's a three that splits off into maybe a couple of two and a halfs or two and a quarters. I haven't measured it, I'm not 100% sure. And it's a full unrestricted three inch until here. Someone played around with this and they didn't do a really good job welding. So that's a muffler. That's a muffler. That's a cat. And look at these welds, they're horrible. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get rid of all of these and put a straight punch for now and see how he likes it. If he doesn't like it, then we'll put a, maybe a Flowmaster muffler or something along those lines, depending on the noise level. This car was also remote tuned using HP tuners and the owner of the car was also complaining about the quality of the tune. I guess when, when it comes to remote tuning, there's too many variables and stuff. It's not the same as having it on the dyno and having it tuned first hand by someone here because you, won't, you just won't get everything done over the internet. It'll get close, but it won't be perfect. So we're gonna try and tidy up this tune as well after all the issues with it are fixed. And also we're gonna do most likely the coils and the plugs. We're gonna clean out the mass airflow. We're gonna make sure there's no boost leaks. We're gonna make sure this car is in top running condition before we start doing that. And once that's ready, we're gonna throw this on the dyno and see what it makes. I'm currently doing some maintenance on my dyno. It's a Dynocom 5000 unit. Hopefully I'll get all this maintenance done and get it up and running to get the Sab on here. So stay tuned for that. We'll have more exciting things going on here soon. How much horsepower do you think I can make? <laughs> 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 all right.